What a difference a year makes. This time last year, our region was nearing the climax of a 250th anniversary celebration and enjoying all-time record employment. At the same time, the bottom was falling out of the national and global economies. And just as Pittsburgh blew out the candles on its cake, credit markets froze and pundits started talking depression. Through it all, our region has weathered the storm better than most, and now we have the validation of the G20 summit in September. Jim Rohr is back with us today. He's chairman and president of PNC, a sponsor of our region's business and front and center of a lot of the things that have been happening uh, here in the region or, or, or and across the country over the past year. So welcome back. Good to see yeah, you. Nice to be with you, Bill. Yeah, uh, this has to have been, and you've been a banker and in financial services a long time, but this has to have been one of the wildest 12-month periods of your career. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, we had the, we had the subprime crisis, which you know, started a year and a half ago, and we thought we were working our way through that, and the economy just kept deteriorating in a way that I don't think anyone could have, uh, where no one did forecast, and it's, uh, it's become rather problematic, but hopefully we're, hopefully we're bottoming out now. I mean, do you have a sense that, that uh, obviously the whole G20 meeting started to come about, uh, the, the heads of state, in response to what was really perceived to be a crisis? Do you, do you have a sense that we are working our way through that crisis right now, and it's a little less acute? Well, I can tell you, last fall, especially the weekend when Lehman Brothers failed and a number of other transactions, Merrill Lynch and others, took place over the weekend. Uh, we had a liquidity crisis that I think was probably not understood by the public at large. It was really, really a scary weekend, not for PNC, but for the, for the, uh, for the financial markets at the time. And I think the government actually, you know, helped us through that to a great extent. We, we came through that, and clearly uh, the markets were frozen totally frozen in the, in the fourth quarter last year. You couldn't issue almost any kind of uh, paper or debt or equity. And uh, that's really bottomed out now. It's come back. The markets have come back to a great extent. You can issue debt. Uh, you can issue common stock. As you've seen, uh, the second quarter was a big quarter for stock issuance. And, uh, and frankly, the, the, market, the, the capital markets have returned to not the vibrancy that they had before and not the silliness that we had in the securitization market when people securitized bad credit uh, but frankly it's come back and it appears as if the economy actually is bottoming uh, at this time too uh, you know the, the the chairman of the fed uh, Bernanke refers to it as green shoots that he sees hmm. but the housing prices will continue to fall but they're slowing actually sales of uh, sales of existing homes has picked up for the first time in a year and a half uh, you know, we've uh, we've actually seen uh, you know the unemployment the unemployment claims uh, are are flattening out. They're Slow still down they're, they're the slowing claims, down. Right so things aren't falling the way they were, and and there are signs. I mean, we're seeing a little in pickup in industrial production. Lumber prices are up, copper prices are up. Uh, maybe it's because people are just filling inventory from abnormally low places, but you have to turn that around before you can before you can come back. So I think the rest of this year will be. Still be difficult. We'll have rising unemployment and tough uh, housing prices, but in uh, 2010, I think we'll start to see a we'll see a, a slow a slow trip back up. Uh, P PNC entered this as one of the sort of the stars within the financial services industry in terms of its ability to weather this and managed to grow significantly, largely through the national city mm -hmm. uh, acquisition that came along along the way. How's that digestion going on right now? Well, that's exactly right, Bill. You know, we, we managed the, the risk profile of the company so that uh, we didn't expect this kind of an economy to come towards us, but uh, to be able to, to perform throughout different cycles. And so we had, a, we had a much better performance last year than the industry. We made about a billion and a quarter and uh, had a reasonably good year, not a great year. But well, then we also announced the, uh, the National City transaction. We were able to buy National City for a little more than $2 a share, and it's a you know, actually a $150 billion bank, more than, more than doubled our size. And, you know, we were able to, to mark down a lot of their troubled assets at the end of the year. So before, as we closed the transaction, we marked down, we took uh, about $12 billion worth of write-downs or reserves for the National City portfolio prior to going into this year. And that's helped us a lot. That's helped us a lot. Now, it doesn't mean that we still don't have, you know, you know, some troubled assets, but uh, but we we're able to deal with the majority of them in the front end. Yeah, and it obviously increases your footprint pretty significantly. For oh, it see. really does. I mean, it, it takes us from, you know, retail-wise, it takes us to uh, Florida with six and a half billion dollars worth of deposits on the East Coast, to St. Louis where we're the number three bank, to the number three bank in Chicago, and 
uh, number one in, uh, in Cleveland and number two in Indianapolis uh, from a retail point of view, but it also changes the scale of our corporate banking business as we're now the, the fifth largest deposit company in the United States. So. Uh, it really does change the scope of the company a lot. I guess one, always tough to bring two companies together, but I would imagine the cultures of PNC and National City were somewhat similar. Does that make it easier at all? You know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, we, we tried, it was attempted by the two prior chairmen, uh, Merle Gilland and, and then Tom O'Brien, to put these two companies together mm -hmm. because the cultures are similar. They're Midwestern people. A lot of us all went to the same schools or close to the same schools, same Midwestern values. And, uh, and the banks were, were very similar uh, in nature at, at one time. Uh, those transactions didn't, uh, didn't come together, but the, we finally were able to put it together. National City's core business, uh, really, really a good business. They had a lot of customers here in western Pennsylvania, a lot of good customer service in their branches. But what happened, like, it, like a lot of other businesses, they got out of, they got out of what they were, knew what they were doing got into the subprime lending business, started buying loans from California and Florida, uh, bought some, uh, paid some high prices for some inopportune acquisitions at the wrong time. And so we, like every, like all of us, when we get out of our core business, you end up, uh, you end up taking risks that you probably shouldn't have. And that's what really hurt the company and gave, a, gave rise to the opportunity that we could acquire it uh, for $2 in some sense. Uh, so always good to be well positioned to take advantage as those opportunities came along. And the same may hold true for the region in general. And when we come back, I want to talk to you about how Pittsburgh's been holding up and, and really what this G20 opportunity could mean to the region going forward. So we'll be back in a moment uh, with Jim Rohr of PNC. Stay with us.